Let's look at some ratios that are used by managers to assess how assets have been managed. We'll be looking at some of some specific assets and see how they're performing. We will use the financial statements for Aggie Inc. So have those available for reference, uh, the balance sheet and the income statement. In the first set of ratios that we're going to look at, evaluate the performance of accounts receivable specifically the accounts receivable turnover. This is used to look at how liquid the receivables are. We want to see if we're actually collecting them um, as we're supposed to according to our credit policy. The formula is net sales over average accounts receivable. So you're going to look at sales for the year and then the average of the accounts receivable balance over the year. The numerator all we need to get out of the income statement is sales of 95000 In the denominator, we'll need to go to the balance sheet and look at the accounts receivable account. We can see that accounts receivable ended at $14,000. Uh, it began at $18,000. Uh, because what we ended 20x1 with is what we started 20x2 with. So we can put those two numbers in the denominator and average them over the year. 14,000 plus 18,000 divided by 2. And we'll get an answer of 5.94 times. Now this tells managers that Aggie collected its average accounts receivable balance almost six times during the year. And you can see that that equates to about every two months if they collect it six times during the year on average. But we can take that accounts receivable turnover and convert it to the number of days so that it's easier to interpret. It's called the average collection period. The formula is 365 days in a year divided by the accounts receivable turnover that we just calculated. 365 days divided by 5.94 times and we'll get 61.45 days. So what does this tell managers? This just says that it took, it collected its average accounts receivable balance about every 61 days, or again, about every two months. It took 61 days to collect the average receivables. So how do we know if this is good or bad? Well, it really depends largely on the credit terms of the company. So if the terms had been net 30, collecting the average balance every 61 days is really not very good. But if the terms that we had set out to our customers were net 60, meaning pay us in 60 days, then 61.45 days is really pretty good. We are actually sticking to our policy. All right, so that's what we use to assess the liquidity of accounts receivable. Now we can do a similar calculation on inventory. It's called inventory turnover. This looks at, on average, how many times did you sell your inventory during the year. So it's looking at, are you able to move your inventory? The formula is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. So we're going to get cost of goods sold for the year off the income statement, and then go to the balance sheet and get inventory and find the average over the year. Cost of goods sold for 20x2 is 43000 So we'll put that in our numerator, 43000 Then we'll go to the balance sheet, and we see inventory ended at 23000 It began the year at 20000 So 23000 plus 20000 divided by 2. We have the average inventory of 21500 and we have inventory, inventory turnover of two times. So what can management conclude? 
The company sold its average inventory balance two times during the year. About every six months they sold their average inventory. Like the accounts receivable turnover, we can convert the inventory turnover into days using the average sale period. It's 365 days divided by the inventory turnover. So to make this calculation, 365 days divided by 2.0, our inventory turnover, says it took 182.5 days to sell our average inventory. So again, that's about twice a year. It takes six months. Now again, how do we know if this is good or bad? And one of the large determinants of this is the industry. Think about if Aggie Inc. is John Deere Tractor Company. Selling your average inventory twice a year is really pretty good. Big ticket items, they take a while to move. So that would probably be good. But if I told you this was a dairy company, probably not too good. You'd want to move that inventory more than every six months. Next, we'll look at the operating cycle, and this is just trying to measure how long does it take from the time we receive our inventory to the time we convert it to cash. So, of course, what has to happen, we get our inventory, we sell it, then we collect the money. So, you can compute that by taking the average sale period, that is, how long did it take you to sell the inventory, plus the average collection period, the average amount of time to co collect your receivable. So for Aggie Inc., recall that the average time to sell the inventory was 182.5 days. Then it took 61.45 days to collect the money. So the operating cycle is 243.95 days. So what can management conclude? On average, it took about 244 days to see an operating cycle uh, come from receiving the inventory to collecting the cash. Now we'll look at asset turnover, and this is just looking at how did management use the assets to generate sales, specifically. So the formula is sales over average total assets. We'll go get sales for the year out of the income statement, then we'll get total assets off the balance sheet and average it over the year. Sales are $95,000. Put that in the numerator. Now we'll go look at the balance sheet and we see that Total assets ended at 93,000. They began at 86,000. So 93,000 plus 86,000 divided by 2. We get 95,000 divided by 89,500. 1.06 times. So from this, we would say that Aggie's sales were about equal to its assets for the year. If this ratio had been two times, then Aggie sales would have been twice its assets. If it had been 0 0.5, it would have been half of its assets. All right, now let's look at financial leverage. And this is, um, this is a little bit more complicated topic, but what it's trying to look at is, is it good to borrow money for Aggie Inc? Because you want to only borrow money if you are able to generate a return to the creditors that's greater than the cost of borrowing. So financial leverage is positive if the return on assets is greater than the return you have to pay to your creditors. 
It is negative if the return on assets is less than the return paid to the creditors. All right, so again, what you're trying to evaluate is am I generating a greater return on the assets than it costs me to borrow the money to get those assets? So for Aggie Inc., you'll have to go back and look, but we computed the return on assets in the profitability ratios to be 10.73%. We also know from the extra information that the interest rate on bonds payable is 9%. So on an after-tax basis with 20% tax rate, that's 7.2%. So in the extra information, the additional information for Aggie Inc., you will see that the bonds payable had a rate of 9%. And on an after-tax basis, it comes out to be 7.2%. So since the return on assets is greater than the cost of borrowing, we have positive financial leverage. So we're earning more than it cost us to borrow. Now another way to look at financial leverage is you can compare return on assets to return on equity. And since they only had common stock, we can call it return on common equity. If the return on equity is greater than the return on assets, then financial leverage is positive because a greater return was transferred to the shareholders. So since 16% is greater than 10.73%, we can also tell that financial leverage is positive. So we should get the same answer no matter how we determine the financial leverage, but overall, Positive leverage means that debt can benefit the stockholders, that it might be worth borrowing for this company. All right, so those are the ratios we can look at, at to assess asset management. Again, we're trying to make sure that uh, we're using our assets wisely.